So I'm not really going to spend a whole lot of time talking to you about the definitions and the rules and stuff. I want us to actually see how to solve problems with this. So we still have the same row operations, but the calculator is going to do the row operations for us. And this method is an extension of what we just saw in the last section. So if we want to solve this system of equations, and again, I'm just going to write it over here onto the paper. That system is 3x minus 4y equals 1 and 5x plus 2y equals 19. We can go through and do this arithmetic by hand if we're just determined to be miserable. Or we can use the technology that we've got. Hit the matrix button. Notice that here again we have two rows. And we have three columns. And that means our matrix is going to be a two by three. The only thing calculator doesn't do is it doesn't show us that, that little line there. So our coefficient matrix, the coefficients of x are 3 and 5, and the coefficients of y are negative 4 and 2, and the two constants on the other side are 1 and 19. So we're going to go to the edit button and edit matrix A to make it look like what we want it to. So we should have 3 negative 4, one, five, two, nineteen. And then we're going to quit and go to the home screen and we're going to check the matrix to make sure it looks like it's supposed to and it does match what we have. So then we're going to do the reduced row echelon form of this matrix and what the reduced row echelon form always looks like is you have ones and zeros. And then two new, num two new numbers out there in that last column. That's called the reduced row echelon form. Which is RREF for short. So in order to do that whole thing, the calculator's got actually a lot of stuff to do. Because what it's really going to do is the first thing it'll do is multiply the top by 5 and the bottom by negative 3 and get the 1, 0. And then it'll figure out how to take these two numbers and turn the top one or the bottom one into 0 and then it'll swap places on the rows. There's a lot of different pathways to that. The calculator um, just chooses the one that it thinks is the most efficient. So we're going to let it do its thing because it's so incredibly good at it. So we're going to go over here to math. We go down and find item B, which is the reduced row echelon form. And we have to tell it which matrix we want it to operate on. Of course, that's matrix A. And hit enter. And it comes back and it gives us the solution. And since this is the x, that means x equals 3. And since this is the y, that means y equals 2. So the solution, written as an ordered pair, is 3, 2. It's the intersection point of these two equations, if you were to graph them. Now 
Now look at all the math that had to be had to take place to get there. First you multiplied the top one by 5, the bottom one by negative 3, and added those two together. Then you replaced the second row with the sum of row 1 and 2. So 15 minus 15 was 0, and negative 20 and negative 6 made 26, and 5 and negative 57 made negative 52. And then we changed the negative 4 into a 0 by multiplying row 1 by 13, because 13 will cause that to cancel out if we multiply row 2 by negative 2. Now the figuring out what to multiply by is usually the annoying part. So then we go through that and then we replace row 1 with that and then add together again. And then finally Change 39 to a 0 by multiplying that whole row by 1 over 39 and change this to a 1 by multiplying this whole row by 1 over negative 26, which gives us this, and 117 over 39 was 3 and 52 over 26 was 2. I had to do that in graduate school. We didn't have a calculator at that point that would do this for us. We had computer programs. But I, when I learned that the TI-83 would do these, or the TI, I actually started with the TI-81 and it would do this, I was thrilled. Because, I mean, this is not hard, but it's just arithmetic. And it's tedious and it's annoying and it takes a whole page. So now we're going to solve another one in less time than it took to talk about that one. Use the Gauss-Jordan method to solve the system. 4x plus 5y is equal to 10. 7x plus 8y is equal to 19. This corresponds to the 2 by 3 matrix. 4, actually I should go across. 4, 5, 10, 7, 8, 19. That's going to be matrix A. So all I really need to do here now is go matrix over to edit, hit enter, and just change the entries in matrix A to match what my problem says. 4, 5, 10, 7, 8, 19. And then quit, check to see what matrix A looks like, make sure it looks like this, and then take the reduced row echelon form of it by going to matrix, math, down to option B, matrix A, close the parentheses, and that quick, we know what the answer is. So it tells us that the solution is x equals 5 when y is equal to negative 2, and we should write the solution as an ordered pair. And that is exactly what I want to see on your paper for work when I have you do this, okay? I want you to tell me the system of equations, then translate it into the matrix. Tell me what the matrix was. And then once you verify that your calculator has that matrix, then you do the reduce row echelon form for that matrix and tell me what it looks like and then from there you tell me what the solution is. Okay? That's what I want every time. Okay, so 
Here's a system of three equations with three variables. A little uglier. I wouldn't even want, well, I've done it, but I don't, I don't like doing the arithmetic by hand. This takes up a whole page. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it on much less than a whole page. We're going to write down the system, x minus y plus 5z. is equal to negative 6, 3x plus 3y minus z is equal to 10, x plus 3y plus 2z is equal to 5. Now the calculator steps are on here, but I'm going to walk through them with you instead. So we're going to make the matrix. going to put it in the calculator. Remember that you have to change this one because this is a three rows by four columns. So this is a three by four matrix. And then we enter in the numbers. One, negative one, 5, negative 6, 3, 3, negative 1, 10, 1, 3, 2, 5. So go back to your home screen, clear it off. Have it show you matrix A, make sure it looks like it's supposed to. And then go back to matrix, go to the math menu, choose reduce row echelon form, and choose matrix A. So then we get the reduced row echelon form of A. Notice that this has all zeros except ones on the diagonal, one for each variable, and then a column of constants. So this tells us that x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to negative 1. And we should write that as an ordered triple. One, two, negative one. So there's your whole problem. Any questions so far? Does this seem pretty easy actually? Yeah. It's not nearly as Frustrating, I think, probably is some of the other things that you've done. Now, don't get too fond of it being easy because we do have to apply it to word problem situations. That's going to be the, that's going to be the more challenging part. So this just steps you through what I just did on the calculator. And we'll do example four now. Work along with me.
make sure that when you get the augmented matrix, print it out, make sure that it's correct. And then tell me what the solution is. I want you to do this one. I think it's negative too. Yes. Put it up there where it actually looks like a negative too. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks terrible, doesn't it? No. We're going to make it into a fraction. The one thing I haven't showed you yet is that you can convert your reduced row echelon form into a fraction, just like you can with everything else converting it into a fraction. So the way that we do that, and I'm going to go first through the matrix part, part of this. Our matrix was 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 3, negative 1, 1, 6, negative 2, negative 4, 2, 0. And then when you put that in there, And I'm going to actually clear it. I'm going to go edit. Three by four. One, two, negative one, zero. 3, negative 1, 1, 6, negative 2, negative 4, 2, 0, <clears throat> so there's the matrix. And when I do the reduced row echelon form, now if I actually just hit enter now, it'll show me those ugly long decimals, okay? When you see the ugly long decimals, just hit second and enter. I don't know if you realized watching me or not, but if you hit your second button and your enter key, it repeats the last thing that you did. If you hit it again, it goes back to the one before that. So it'll actually step back about 18 steps for you. So I, you know, just bring back reduce row echelon form of A, then hit your math key, and choose one to change it to a fraction. And now instead of seeing the ugly decimals, you see exact fractions.
Now, once you've got the fractions, and yes, the fractions is gonna, is gonna be what I want, because you need this to be exact, and you'll see why in a minute. Is there a solution to this? Is there a solution? What does that tell you about whether or not there's a solution? Infinite solutions. Because 0x plus 0y plus 0z is 0 is true. So yes, there are solutions. What do they look like? Well, now that's another story. We have to recover them. So what we're going to have to do to recover those solutions is look back at this and put them back into their equation, their uh, equation counterparts. That first one represents x plus 1 over 7z equals 12 over 7. And this one represents y minus 4 over 7 z equals negative 6 over 7. What do they have in common? What variable do they have in common? They both have a z. Okay? Z is what in matrix uh, language, matrix solution language is, is called a slack variable. So what those two tell us is that we can find X and Y in terms of Z. X equals 12 over 7 minus 1 over 7 Z. And Y equals, and I'm going to switch back over to this in a second, negative 6 over 7 plus 4 over 7 Z. So what you do is you take that equation and you solve this one for X. And then you take this equation and you solve it for y. Which is what I've done here. The only thing is, you have to notice that this is a common denominator. Since those are both sevens, write it all over one denominator and the numerator is 12 minus z because that's 12 minus 1z. Okay? And you also have a common denominator here. And since that common denominator is 7, then this is minus 6 plus 4z over 7. So now you can write a solution to that system. The solution to the system looks like this. Remember it's always x, y, z. So your solution is this is x This is y, and then of course the last part of it is you have to pick a value for z to find any particular answer. Now, 
You can pick Z to be zero, high, 2019, whatever you want to be, and then this will determine what the X and Y that goes with that are. Okay? So this is a formula for the solutions. It's not the solution itself if you had a particular value for Z, but if it told you Z is going to be this in this scenario, then you could in fact find what X and Y and Z are. Because you were given Z, you can find X and Y. Okay? But the calculator still certainly made getting there a lot easier. Does anybody have any questions? So that's as far as you go. That's, that's, that's as far as you can go. That's as far as you can go. If you had an application problem and it gave you this answer, they would probably say, suppose that whatever it is Z represents was this much, then how much would X and Y have to be? Then you would plug it in. Then you would plug it in and you would give an answer. So now we are down to an applications problem. Convenience store sells 23 sodas one summer afternoon. They sell 12 ounce, 16 ounce, and 20 ounce cuts, small, medium, and large. The total volume that they sold that afternoon was 376 ounces. Suppose the prices for the small, medium, and large sodas are a dollar, dollar twenty-five, and a dollar forty, and the total sales were twenty-eight dollars and forty-five cents. The question is, how many of each size did the store sell? Now we've got several pieces of information here. This first part up here tells us they sell three sizes. And those three sizes, we don't have any idea how many of each size they sold. So that tells you that's your variables. Your sizes are your variables. So X is going to be the small ones, Y is going to be the mediums, and Z is going to be the large ones. And if you add the small, medium, and large together, they sold 23 sodas of the various sizes. Since they know they sold 376 ounces total of all the sodas, and the small sodas were 12 ounces each, the volume is going to be 12 times X and 16 times Y and 20 times Z to give us 376 total ounces. So basically this equation tells us how the ounces were split up among the various sizes. <clears throat> and then in part A, they give us the information for a third um, constraint on this system. It sells, says that small ones sold for a dollar each. So this would be a dollar times X, dollar 25 times Y, a dollar 40 times Z, and the total sales was $28.45. The hardest part of this problem is setting up the matrix, setting up the system of equations. The table method they show you here is actually a good method. Because you take from the table method, then, that here is your system of equations.
And before we go any further, does that make sense to everybody how we got that? Your first equation sets up your variables. Your second equation talks about the amount of soda. The variables actually were the sizes, so you might want to write that down. And then the third equation talks about the amount of money. And if you kind of get yourself in the habit of looking at the problem and thinking, okay, what did they tell me in that sentence? Did they tell me what the variables were? Did they tell me what the total number of those sodas was? What did they tell me about the total amount of soda that was sold? And how much was in each one of those different variables? And then, you know, they're telling me about money. How much money? There's an equation about money. So we're not going to worry about this part down here. We're going to worry about solving, first of all, see what X, Y, and Z were. Because it says clearly they sold 23 sodas. They made $28.45. And the total amount of soda sold was three seventy six. So there must be a definite number for X, Y, and Z. So we need to find X, Y, and Z. That means we need to solve this matrix Ah, didn't need that X in there. Forget the X. So that's matrix A. And all we need to find is the row, reduced row echelon form of matrix A. And rather than me rewrite it, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the calculator and find it. So you follow along to make sure that we're all on the same page. Matrix, edit. So our first row is 1, 1, 1, 23. Second row is 12, 16, 20, 376. Our third row, now you can put in the decimals, but watch carefully what happens. I put in 1.00, but it changes it to 1. That's okay. 1.00 and 1 are the same thing. And then 1.25, 1.40, which it'll change to 1.4, and then 28.45. So there's my matrix. And anytime you see some little dots over here on the right hand side of the screen, it says that the, there's more than it could show you. So scroll across. And then we do our reduced row echelon form. Only we don't want it to be fractions because we got decimals here. Decimals are fine. We hope that we hope everything comes out to be integers. That would be ideal. So we hit enter. So the reduced row echelon form, one zero zero six zero one zero nine. Zero, zero, one, eight. And that means they sold six smalls 
nine mediums, and eight large. Or they sold six small sodas, eight nine medium sodas, and eight large sodas. Now, write a sentence. Tell me what that answer is. Don't tell me what X, Y, and Z are. Because X, Y, and Z are sizes of sodas. Okay? That's part A. Okay, it says, suppose the prices for small, medium, large sodas are changed to $1, $2, and $3. They're not changing the ounces, they're just changing the, the prices here. So for part B, we need to change not the dollar, because it says that's still a dollar, but the dollar twenty-five became two dollars. And the dollar forty became three dollars. And everything else is the same. How many of each size did they sell? Well, that's quick to figure out. Go back in here, back to your matrix, back to matrix A and edit it and edit only the bottom row. So that's gonna be two, that's gonna be three, and we still have total sales of 28.45. Now let me ask you a question. Do you already know there's a problem with this answer? Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah, so that's not even possible, right? You're not going to get 28 and change from selling whole dollar amounts of soda. So you know in, up front, if you're thinking, wait, there's something weird going to happen here, okay? So, if I do this, actually all, all I want to do is repeat the last calculation, and that's what I get. I get one with the zeros and zero, one, zero, and I get negative one and two and zero, but then I get a zero and a zero and a one. How does the matrix tell you there's no solution to this problem? That's right, zero does not equal one. So there's no solution. But if you look at it realistically like we did before we ever launched into actually solving it, we knew in advance that that wasn't going to be a solution because you can't take whole dollar sales and come up with change. Okay. And that's what it says at the bottom of the PowerPoint. In retrospect, that's clear because each soda sells for a whole number of dollars. The total amount of money is not a whole number of dollars. But it's not always easy to tell if there's going to be no solution. You know, it just This one made it pretty obvious. And actually, if you did a different way of, if, if we were all in here doing the problem and everybody was doing the reduced row echelon stuff and doing the whole page calculations by hand, 
because of the choices we would have made in between, we would not all have gotten the same values here in the last matrix. It would not say zero equals negative 1955. Okay? It doesn't always come out to be zero, 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 one. It just depends on which way you do it. But the calculator comes out and it looks for the most efficient method and it does it. Now part C says, suppose the prices are the same as part B, but now the revenue is $48. Is this going to be possible? Can you have dollar, two dollar, and three dollar sodas and the selling, their selling price adds up to $48? Yeah, that's possible. It doesn't mean we're guaranteed for it to be right, but it's possible. So we're going to go in and we're going to alter the matrix one more time. And change the twenty-eight forty-five to forty-eight dollars. That's the only change we're going to make. So then we're going to go back and do the reduced row echelon form of our altered matrix again. And now we get this matrix. What does that bottom row tell you about the sodas, whether or not there's a solution? That's right, there's infinite solutions. Lots of ways they could make $48 selling those sodas. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the matrix and figure out what those solutions look like. So I'm going to write the matrix so what that row of zeros tells us is number one many solutions But it also, this is usually the row that tells us what Z is. And I can plug in anything I want to in this last row, and it would work. Because zero times Z winds up being zero. So this tells us that Z is going to be the variable that we're going to solve for. So it's the variable that defines what X and Y are going to be. In fact, Z, if you think about functions, when we talked about functions last time, Z is the independent variable. Because we pick a value for Z and we'll be able to tell what X and Y would have to be. So it's the independent value, variable or the independent value. So then we have to go get our equations for X and Y from the two rows. This one says X minus Z equals negative 2, which tells me then that X is equal to negative 2 plus Z. Just add Z to both sides. And this one tells me that Y plus 2Z is equal to 25. So 25 minus 2Z is the value of Y. So my solution then, my complete solution, looks like this. And all I do is pick a value for Z, and I can determine what X and Y would have to be. And take into account that in some cases, depending on what I pick for Z, there might be all Z and 
y or all x and z. Some values of z may preclude being able to have any smalls or any medians, but you're definitely going to sell large ones. Okay? Although you could choose to sell no large ones, which means if you sold no large ones, then you sold 25 medium ones. Oh, but that wouldn't work. Because how many small ones would you have had to sell? You can't have a negative. Okay? So always be thinking about whether something is reasonable or not. You can obviously Z cannot be zero. That cannot be one of the solutions. Just because there's infinitely many solutions doesn't mean that Z could arbitrarily be whatever it wants to be. You have the constraint here that Z's got to be greater than two. That's just all there is to it. No, because you can't sell negatives. If you look at what your actual cost is going to be if you sell no large and you can't sell negative smalls, so if you try to plug in and find out how many mediums you're selling, you're not going to get $48. Okay? Just because it says Z is the independent value and there's many solutions doesn't mean that Z can be anything. There's going to be restrictions on Z. And you have to realize that because Z being zero would make that a negative amount. You can't sell negative sodas. Okay? It also tells you that Z has to be, let's see, looking at this one. If that has to be greater than zero, then 25 has to be greater than 2z. So that means then if you turn that around, z has to be less than 12, because it can't be 13 and it can't be 12 and a half. So there's your potential z values. Z can be 2. Well, actually, it has to be greater than 2. Uh, no, really, it doesn't. It just has to be equal to or greater than 2. It could be 2 because you could sell no small ones. So Z is going to take on the values of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12, but not 13 because it has to be less than 12.5. So these are all the possible combinations that you could sell. If you plug in that value of Z, that'll tell you all the possible combinations you could sell and make the amount of money that they stated they would make. Okay? Yes? I'm going to be told it's less than 12. Ah, you're right. It can't be. Well, no, it can because it's, it's actually less than 12.5. So it could be 12. It could be 12. Okay? And I think that wraps it up. We're pretty close. And that's what this last slide says here is that we have 11 solutions that correspond to Z being 2, 3, 4 through 12. Now there is a part D. Part D says give the solutions from part C that have the smallest and largest numbers of large sodas. Okay, that's not really hard to do. In fact, I think I might just leave that on the PowerPoint. Smallest number of sodas would be, if you have the smallest number of large sodas, that was when Z was equal to 2. So if Z was 2, means they didn't sell any small sodas. And they sold 21 medium sodas. So they sold 2 large and 21 mediums, which is a total of 23. And if you put the prices in there, it gives you the right price. For the largest number of soda, of large sodas, you would let Z be 12. Then X would be 10. 
and Y would be one, so you tell, sell 10 small, one medium, and 12 large sodas, which again is the 23 sodas. And you can plug in your prices and see that you would sell the same amount and the same amount of sales. Okay? Now, this is your homework problem. This is the your turn problem for that section. So use that last one as your example. I'm not going to solve that one for you. If you look and show me, that's your your turn one. So your assignment is to go ahead and complete the show me homework for 2.1, 2.2. Watch the videos that I'm going to put up for 2.3 and 2.4. We'll do 2.3 and 4 in class next time. If I get 2.5 put up, you can watch it. You'll see it when it pops up, but I don't know if I will or not. We're looking at a test in, I think, two weeks. Okay? I think that's what I figured out because I don't think we want to finish. Yeah, I think we want to have another class session, at least one, and then probably do the, the test the next one. Okay?